ChatGPT changed the world overnight. It took AI from being a niche field that almost no one talked about to being the biggest thing to happen in tech in decades. In this video, we're going to cover how what started as a non-profit became one of the most important companies in the world and how its unlikely CEO found his way to the top. This is the story of OpenAI. Before we get into the story of OpenAI, we need to talk about AI in general. How did this field get started, and is it really all that new? AI as a field got its start in the 1950s, and some of the algorithms we still use today came even earlier but it wasn't known as AI at that point. Since the field's inception, the progression of AI has consisted of many steps and leaps forward, which are generally followed by a few steps back. For example, in the 1970s, the US government was interested in making machines able to transcribe and translate spoken language, and the expectations were incredibly high. Computer scientist Marvin Minsky, one of the fathers of AI, told Life magazine in 1970 that in three to eight years we will have a machine with the general intelligence of an average human being. Although Marvin Minsky was wrong, he proved that natural language processing could work. But one important component was missing, and that was computational power. While the math checked out, the computers simply couldn't store enough data or process it fast enough. However, as computers got more and more powerful and the internet ushered in the age of data, machine learning and data science, which are subsets of AI got better and better as time progressed, setting the stage for our current point in history. Fast forward to modern times. In 2012, the paper ImageNet Classification with Deep Convolutional Neural Networks was published by Jeffrey Hinton, Ilya Satskiver, and Alex Krzyzewski. The method introduced in the paper was groundbreaking in more ways than one. It was a huge leap in image classification, which before this was seen as a very difficult task, which today is borderline trivial, and that the algorithm introduced in the paper could be trained on GPUs. And when I say GPUs, yes, I do mean the graphical processing units that run the games you play on your computer every night. What makes this interesting is that up until this point, everything had been running on CPUs, or central processing units. And to put it briefly, a CPU processes things in sequences, which means that all operations are done one after another, whereas a GPU allows you to parallelize operations and do multiple things at the same time. This is an incredibly important feature in AI because it allows you to perform multiple calculations simultaneously, which speeds up the process of making an AI algorithm significantly. 2012 was the start of the deep learning revolution, which propelled AI forwards at speeds not seen before, and the technology was being used more and more. At the same time as this is happening, a soon-to-be household name was starting to get scared of how fast AI was progressing and that it was dominated by Google. Sam Altman is a Stanford dropout who started a Y Combinator-backed social network called Looped, which ended up kind of failing. If you're not a startup person, just know that Y Combinator, or YC for short, is the most important startup accelerator in the world. Looped was an app where users could share their location with friends, kind of like a discount Facebook, and that company was acquired by Green Dot Corporation for 43 million bucks. And only in the US can that be called failing. In 2012, he became a partner at YC, and in 2014, he took over as president. In his time as president of YC, he launched a new fund, bet more on research, and drove YC to invest more in deep tech, which is a term describing businesses with significant scientific and or engineering challenges. One of the reasons for making the changes he did was because he felt that AI as a field wasn't getting enough attention, especially the foundational research. And at the same time, Elon Musk was getting increasingly worried that Google would dominate AI altogether. Together. Musk was not wrong to suppose this, because Google had been a driver of AI research for quite some time. The group behind the revolutionary 2012 paper I mentioned earlier were all working at Google from 2013, and another important AI company called DeepMind was acquired by Google in 2014. In December of 2015, Sam Altman left his YC position and formed OpenAI as a non-profit with Elon Musk and himself as co-chairs, and their mission statement said, Our goal is to advance digital intelligence in the way that is most likely to benefit humanity as a whole. We believe AI should be an extension of individual human wills and in the spirit of liberty as broadly and evenly distributed as possible. In addition to having Elon on the team, the research director was none other than Ilya Satskiver, one of the authors of the 2012 paper that started the deep learning revolution. In addition, their CTO, Greg Brockman, was the former CTO of payment company Stripe, as well as a host of other talented researchers and engineers. Can you describe that whole process? Yeah, so stand we started as a nonprofit. Like I said earlier, OpenAI was started as a non-profit. So who put money into this venture? Well, in the beginning, Paul Graham, Elon Musk, and organizations like Amazon AWS and Infosys put money into OpenAI. And the total funding they had when all was said and done 
was $1 billion. And as the founding president release says, the goal of the organization was to ensure that artificial intelligence would benefit all humanity. And to do so, they would share their research and collaborate with other institutions and universities. Okay, so you've raised a billion dollars. What's the first thing you do? Well, the first thing that OpenAI did, which they did right, was to hire the best talent. And instead of paying insane salaries like Microsoft, Google or Amazon, OpenAI hired in a mission-driven way. While Microsoft paid top AI researchers the same as NFL quarterbacks, so for you Europeans watching out there, it's a lot of money to attract and keep them, OpenAI offered something different, the chance to explore research aimed solely at the future instead of products and quarterly earnings. And this actually turned out to work pretty well. So OpenAI managed to attract some of the most talented people in the space, and I'm sure that their salaries weren't terrible either. Once all the talent was in place, they started researching, and some of their work was geared towards making AI that could beat video games. What? Really? Video games? That might sound strange, but AI is often developed to beat video games because they provide a clear, controlled environment to test and improve the algorithms. And in addition to the video games, they also did research on robotics and even more importantly, language. In 2018, OpenAI released a research paper called Improving Language Understanding by Generative Pre-Training. In effect, introducing the first GPT, or Generative Pre-Trained Transformer model, that was made for generating language. And incidentally, that model architecture, or the building blocks of the AI model, was first introduced by Google Brain researchers in the paper Attention is All You Need. If you've been following AI for any length of time, you probably know that AI is pretty expensive. And in 2019, OpenAI decided that being a non-profit was not viable for researching artificial general intelligence. Because as a non-profit, getting their hands on the massive amount of computational resources they needed in order Order to do their research was impossible. So what OpenAI did to combat this was that they made an entirely new legal structure. So their solution was to create OpenAI LP, which was a hybrid of a for-profit and a non-profit company that they were calling a capped profit company. After the announcement of the for-profit arm, OpenAI started raising cash. And in 2019, Microsoft invested $1 billion, half of which was in cloud credits, allowing OpenAI to use as much computational resources as they please. OpenAI's cloud spending went from $7.9 million in 2017 to $120 million in 2019 and 2020 combined. And this increase in spending makes sense because in 2019, GPT-2 was released. When OpenAI released GPT-2 in 2019, it was the largest model of its kind, featuring 1.5 billion parameters. Now, parameters are the parts of the model that are learned from the training data, and generally speaking, the more parameters a model has, the more complex and nuanced its understanding and generation of language can be. OpenAI chose not to release the full model publicly in 2019 due to concerns over potential misuse such as generating misleading news articles or impersonating individuals online. Instead, they released smaller versions of the model and staged a later release of the full model. This marked the first departure from full openness, and OpenAI received significant criticism for this move. So you know GPT-3, the model that you first got to try out when ChatGPT was released? That model was actually released to the research community in 2020 and to the public via an API in March of 2021. And apart from AI circles and some developers, no one really cared about that release. But what should have made GPT-3 a lot more impactful was its size. It was 10 times larger than GPT-2 and it was superior in all capabilities. The progress between GPT-2 and GPT-3 was achieved in just 9 months, and that demonstrated the rapid evolution of the field. GPT-3 allowed users to generate language without writing any code through the API, and it performed well across most tasks and it was used for generating blog posts, emails, text summaries, and code. So by 2021, GPT-3 generated 4.5 billion words per day. On November 30th of 2022, OpenAI released ChatGPT to the public, and the launch was a huge success, gaining 1 million users within 5 days and becoming the fastest growing consumer application of all time. This absolutely fantastic growth continued, and by January of 2023, ChatGPT boasted 100 million monthly active users. So at that time, Microsoft invested 10 billion into OpenAI. And that capital was sorely needed, because OpenAI's losses in 2022 were estimated at $550 million, with ChatGPT itself costing $700,000 per day just to run. And Sam Altman has estimated that OpenAI now generates 100 billion words per day. While ChatGPT has been an extremely successful application that has propelled OpenAI to the forefront of the AI race, not everyone is pleased with how OpenAI has achieved this lead. 
Long before the release of ChatGPT and even before GPT-2, Elon decided to step down from the board of OpenAI. And in 2018, a press release stated that this decision was due to a potential conflict of interest with Tesla, as both companies competed for AI talent. And after leaving, Elon didn't fulfill his promise to continue funding OpenAI. It has later been revealed that Elon thought OpenAI had fallen so far behind Google, presumably due to advances by DeepMind, and that drastic measures had to be taken. Elon proposed taking the reins of OpenAI and to steer it towards prosperity, but the OpenAI team didn't want that, and as a result, they parted ways with Elon. There was also speculation that Musk tried to make OpenAI part of Tesla, which also failed. This drama has continued to the point that Elon Musk is now suing OpenAI for abandoning its original mission. OpenAI on their side means that all of these claims are bogus and wants to have the case dismissed. And as if they're pouring salt into Elon's wound, OpenAI are also competing with Elon on robotics through Figure, which seem to be progressing at a faster pace than Tesla. Aside from the Elon drama, we can't forget the time that Sam Altman was almost fired from OpenAI in late 2023 when the board said, Mr. Altman's departure follows a deliberative review process by the board, which concluded that he was not consistently candid in his communications with the board, hindering its ability to exercise its responsibilities. The board no longer has confidence in his ability to continue leading OpenAI. So for a while it seemed like Sam Altman was out of OpenAI, but in the span of a weekend the drama was resolved, where Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella took the lead in ensuring that OpenAI went back to normal. And as a result of this drama, only one original board member, Adam D'Angelo, CEO of Quora, remains on the board. But it's not just internal squabbles that are problematic for OpenAI. Competition in the AI space is heating up fast. Meta, Google, Cohere, Perplexity, and a lot more are all competing with OpenAI in the large language model sphere. All of this aside, in a little over a year, OpenAI has gone from being a company that almost no one knew about to being a household name. OpenAI. OpenAI. Chat GPT 4.0. OpenAI. It's so fast that every new development seems like a massive leap. Try and tell me exactly what they're doing right now, please. Um, right now the ducks are gently gliding across the water. To exemplify what I mean, on the 13th of May of 2024, OpenAI released their new flagship model, GPT 4.0. This is GPT 4.0. Now this model is a combination of the text, vision and speech models that they've released previously. In addition to releasing a new model, they also released a desktop app and it's all available for hey, free. Hey ChatGPT. Hey there, how's it going? Yeah, it's going really well. I was wondering if you could help me with a uh, coding problem today. Now this demo was extremely impressive and this together with the progress that we've seen in the last two years, we're seemingly making decades worth of progress in just years worth of time. Imagine if someone told you in 2021 that you could use AI to summarize entire books or make images that look 95% real, help you with your homework and much, much more. Would you have believed them? I think a lot of people, myself included, would have doubted that. If this video has you wondering about how all of this is even possible, it all has to do with GPUs and semiconductors, the circuit boards that do all the calculations for ChatGPT. OpenAI even changed their company status to a for-profit because of them. So if you want to know more about how the most complex thing humanity has ever built is made, watch this video on semiconductors to get an introduction.